Hail and much adventures, welcome to Dragon Age Will Guard. It's me, Spazza King, and today I will show you my new necromancer build. And yeah, it's kinda not possible to build a real summoner necromancer in Dragon Age Will Guard, but 100% critical hit with abilities, basically unlimited health, and insane damage per second. This build completely broken and dominates the game. It's the most broken build for mage possible. To make everything work, you need correct gear, right skill distribution, and also right companions in your party. So, as always, let's start with the skill tree and I'll explain how to level in early, mid and late game, of course. For those of you who don't know, you can pick only one specialization and it will be locked behind level 20. So, to hit dash color specialization, which is our specialization for today, we need level 20, then we can unlock one of the two parts at level 30, and then second part at level 40. And we need all nodes over here in dash color, but we need to make smart choices when we're going into this direction. And as dash color, you will use your stuff most of the time. For those of you who like orb and dagger gameplay, it's also possible with this build, it's really flexible, but you need to know some secrets, I will show you. So, how we going into dash color specialization, we basically going to the top left, picking mortar concentration. It will enhance your range attack by holding your range attack button for longer than 3 seconds, you will have maximum damage increase. So it's really nice buff to range attack and our range attack is our main damaging ability for us. But still we will be able to use as much magic as possible and it's really like most fun, most broken build for mage. Then we get in stuff energy regenerate. Basically in combat it's a uh, like nice note over here. And then we get in frost nova. So, in early game it's really nice and very useful skill for us, we definitely want to use it, it's area control skill, it got only cooldown, no mana cost, and you will freeze her enemies around you, so you can disengage or just destroy them. When you pick in Frost Nova, I really advise you to get damage versus frozen plus 15% instantly, it's really nice uh, damage buff in early game. But then in early game just go to the left part, gain physical resistance, then abilities that deal necrotic or cold damage increase other damage type, it's also nice damage increase, because when you use Frost Nova, other necrotic abilities will be more powerful, and that's why you want to go to your first and main necrotic ability as fast as possible. So we're getting necrotic damage plus 10%, executing detonation on enemy grants shocking wave, and also we're getting damage versus barrier plus 20% and finally getting corrupted ground. It's area duration ability and uh, Pretty nice necrotic damage, also apply weakened to enemies, so they will deal less damage for us. And also it will be applying necrosis to our enemies. Necrosis is necrotic damage over time, so it's really powerful stuff and also very nice in combination. So you just cast this spell, when enemies in necrotic area you freeze them with Frost Nova and that's how you play in early game. So pretty nice like straightforward combination. But that's around like uh, 10 levels or so and in early game just go and uh, feel this part of the tree. So most importantly get uh, electric armor as fast as possible, eclectic armor of course. And uh, when you're wearing different classification of armor and helmet you will gain mana regeneration reduce mana cost for range attack and will have more weak point damage. That's really important stats for us, especially since we will do most of our damage with range attack, as I told you. And also we're getting all nodes, other nodes, range attack damage plus 15%, we're getting primary duration plus 20% to get upgrade for our duration and area abilities, and this is great nodes, so we will have more effect for duration abilities, and it's area duration ability, corrupted ground, We'll have more radius for corrupted ground, and also we get our mana back after triggering duration ability. And hitting multiple enemies with single area ability will deal more damage for each enemy hit. So at this point of the game, you probably will already be around level 20. And that's where we're going into dash color specialization. But before I explain this tree over here, if you find a lot of wolf status, you will have spare points. So. You will have bunch of points already and uh, where you want to spend it. You don't want to spend it over here, 
in early game you want to go into the bottom part get uh, this fast evasion it's very nice for combat for mages then get mana regeneration and chain lightning then get maximum mana plus 50 percent uh, just pl plus 50 of course then perfect cast followed by critical damage plus 10 percent followed by mana restored after defeating enemy and followed by damage versus barrier 20 percent and followed by strike duration Tempest ability. So Tempest ability is electricity damage and you want to use it a lot but it will shock enemies, it will apply some damage over time and it, this bottom right part is very powerful note elemental catalyst abilities gain 15% bonus damage based on the damage type of your staff and orb weapons. So uh, this is the tree that you will be making while you're having some spare points before hitting the school of specialization or right after you hit this specialization and before level 30. Why we want this? Uh, because of our weapons and armors. But more on that later in gear part of the guide. So instantly you will be getting this insane ultimate that can deal as you can see around 5k damage which is pretty like insane. But what is the coolest part here? Basically you will become a spirit, you know, like vengeful spirit as it's starting to leech from enemies. And you will just absorb life from them, so you will be kind unkillable in this form. And then we get in Spirit Bomb, it's our Duration Blast ability that's doing insane amount of damage, but actually with our skill tree, Corrupted Ground will deal even more most of the time and in less amount of time. But why we need Spirit Bomb? Because it will apply Siphon on enemies and Siphon will deal damage each second. It will be necrotic damage over time and it will return portion of this damage as healing. But we just need this Siphon condition again because we will have gear that will rely on this condition. So I don't like the skill actually now. I think there's better skills in mage skill tree, but Siphon is insane. So instantly when you hit this tree, basically get all nodes over here and you want to have area abilities uh, to deal necrotic damage. So your Frost Nova will start to deal necrotic damage if you're still using it. It's like nice note, uh, but most importantly, Corrupted Ground will deal increased damage. So that's a nice part of uh, over here. We're getting range attack plus 15%, we're getting necrotic damage plus 10% and upgrading duration abilities. So duration abilities like corrupted ground when you kill enemies will spawn necrotic bolts and they will seek nearby enemies and destroy them too. So that's like nice power stuff over here. When you hit level 30, you want to go with dash search so you can hold uh, your range attack button, tap light attack and you will do 200% of usual damage but with increased mana consumption. This is not a problem with our build. Still we're getting more maximum mana, we're getting abilities cost additional mana but gain penetration so you're not relying on enemy resistances and armor. And also your range attack now deals necrotic damage and leeches 10% of damage done, replenishing your health. So now we will be able to leech with our damage with our range attack damage and that completely breaks the game when you hit right gear and you can just defeat whole game at level 30 when you hit this note over here. At level 40 just go and take soul burn, more health and more leech effectiveness. Also get these actions that consume mana now consume health when mana is depleted so you're basically not reliant on mana anymore. You can hold your range attack, it will cost you mana but you will just leech the health when you're using this attack and you will be never out of health or mana basically. You will be out of mana but that's not a problem for build again. And also you will gain bonus damage relative to how much of health you target and you have lost. So when you're losing your health, when the target got low health, you will deal more damage and that's like a great part of our build. When we're losing health we will be focusing on uh, damage when your health is low stat and that's basically insane because when our health is low we will deal more damage we will uh, basically deal more damage so target will lose more health and we will start to deal more damage relative to our health lost and his health lost and that's basically like insane loop of insane overpowered like stats and boosts so 
When you hit this level 40 and uh, full note of the scholar, build is basically ready and you will be completely overpowered. What other notes we want to have? So. I like to go here first and get this 5% uh, bonus damage for each unique primer and affliction on our target, since we will deal shocked condition, bleed condition, siphoned and also necrotic. It will deal a lot more bonus damage. Then we get an affliction duration plus 20%, so we can keep this buff even more. We get in return fire, advantage duration plus 20% and hitting enemy with duration ability reduces the defense by 5%. That's pretty nice start uh, just to, to be like more powerful. Wall of Fire is late game stuff. We're not using Wall of Fire, but every ability you pick will give you ability damage plus 15%. So in the late game, when you got all nodes, you can just uh, focus on some abilities. Another important stat is our critical damage. As I promised you, we will have 100% critical rate and dealing 20% more bonus stagger to enemies with affliction is not bad because we can stagger big dragons with this and affliction damage plus 10% getting fireball just to get to critical damage plus 10% so that's uh, like bottom left part bottom right part I explained you already should have it and that's pretty much like late game -ish stuff and then you can actually get some notes over here so to increase damage, you can get uh, yourself to the top right. Each active advantage increases your damage dealt by 10%. More health and uh, ability just to deal more ability damage with, our abil with other abilities. And also we can take Fate Reflex, so we can uh, make perfect dodge and slow down time. And also we can have this advantage duration plus 20% here with more damage to our area abilities. And primary duration plus 20% to increase radius of area abilities by 50%. So that's basically it. You can pick uh, any other notes you like uh, if you got more points, but that's like pretty much insanely late game -ish stuff with around 60 points. But to make everything work, you need right weapons and armors. So let's talk about them. I will give you some options, but don't forget we're using eclectic armor. So we need different medium and light or heavier armors and helmets on ourselves. But let's start with our weapon. So weapon will be the bear gain. It's necrotic damage unique elemental stuff. Being unique it can't be dropped randomly. So it's pretty like stable weapon that you will find in correct secret chest. But if you haven't found it yet or just planning to build mage make sure to subscribe because tomorrow you will see the video with every legendary unique weapon in the game where to find it for mage especially so just make sure to watch video tomorrow or you will see this video in the description in the pinned comment if it's already out so what is this stuff it gives you more health it reduces your maximum mana but it got really crazy unique ability so using ability spends health instead of mana at more cost and as you saw with this build, we got loads of health. So for now, my character got, where is the health? 4k health, 4k health. And we will be using around like uh, 500, 600 health as casting <laughs> instead of our mana. This means we basically got unlimited mana and we will be using our abilities of cooldown. Like every time we get our ability ready, we will use this ability. What is the craziest part? It's basically every time we use our abilities, we will leech the health. You saw already we got some leech abilities and we get leech effectiveness and all other gear will <laughs> benefit this stat too. So we are basically unkillable, always leeching from enemies dude who is basically broken with insane amount of damage. Uh, on this stuff I got 20% range attack damage augmentation. So we will be using range attack a lot and we want to make as much damage as possible with range attack. Damage per second is around 10k, which is insane. I'm basically melting dragons with this build. So about uh, dagger and this orb. What I found, the secret I told you, I promised you the secret. Actually, you benefit from these uh, abilities and uh, unique stuff. Uh, no matter are you using uh, like dagger right now or stuff. If you don't believe me, just watch here. So as you can see, we get um, basically ability to cast my ability without using mana. So no mana used, only HP. But if I switch my weapons, 
it will be completely the same. So I will use my HP right now instead of mana. Just to let me wait for the duration. Now I can cast again. And look, no mana used. <laughs> That's crazy. So basically, if you're able to regain your health uh, some way, this stuff will be insanely overpowered for any mage build, even if you're using your orb and dagger style. So for orb and dagger, same stuff applied. As far as my exploration goes. This means we need some necrotic orb. And there's two of them. Will Song and Fate Light. So, Will Song will give you some stagger and gain health on takedown. I mean, it will give these abilities no matter what. Other abilities will be based on this weapon. Fate Light will give us damage versus health, 25% healing, more health on perfect defense, and 25% light attack damage while you have no potions. Also, I augmented this weapon with damage at high health. I haven't tested throughout, but I guess it's working. So basically, this augment will work no matter what weapon you are using. And that's like crazy part why mage is so broken in this game. So that's like a lot of insane buffs for this uh, insane orb. And I really recommend using Fade Light. How to find Fade Light and basically any type of orb that you've seen in this guide. You will see this icon on top. And this icon is a faction icon. So it's a Morn Watch. If you go into the map, you will see that uh, each area got icons too. And Morn Watch will be Necropolis. So just go to Necropolis, get uh, yourself uh, familiar with this area, open chests, do quests and fill companion line over there. You will have a lot of companion quests in this area. And just by doing this stuff, you will already upgrade your fade light. Yeah, you need to upgrade it. Because first of all, you will find this same orb with a lot less damage, a lot less stagger and a lot less abilities. You will have like just 15% damage versus health and all other abilities will be locked. So just uh, to find and upgrade this stuff, you need to go into Moon Watch. And same goes for any other weapon. So for example, for my dagger, I'm using Enchanted Atame. And it will be Lords of Fortune area. This means uh, just by going into Hall of Valor, into Rivian Coast, I will find loads of these uh, copies of this dagger. It's not the rule, but mostly it works like that. So you'll find more faction-based items in faction-based locations. But you will find it on your adventures anyway. So this dagger is pretty good, it gives you maximum mana, you will gain 2 mana on hit with this weapon so we don't care. You will deal 10% more damage for every 50 mana that you are missing. That's a bit problem for us since we're not using mana for our magic abilities, but we get plenty of ways how to use our mana with our stuff. So it's also nice subtle buff for us if we are losing mana on some abilities we can deal more and more damage. And abilities will cost 50% more mana just 50 more mana and deal 100% bonus damage. And again, this stuff will work anyway. That's why you definitely want this legendary spell blade in your hands. And even when you're not using it. So that's our damage part. Now let's get to our... Oh yeah, I got 20% damage at low health on this dagger. So I guess it's working again. And when you drop into low health, it will deal more and more damage. About our helmet. At first, when I played with this build, I wear crown of leaves. So... It's pretty cool stuff. You will have uh, nice defense. And this means basically enemies will deal low damage to us. When they deal in low damage, we can just leash from them completely free. We won't take any damage. And definitely think about this helmet. I really recommend Crown of Leaves. Another good option if you wish to be and roleplay as complete necromancer is Iron Wheel. It's unique light helmet and... When enemy dies, it spawns operations that deals necrotic damage to nearby enemies. Again, it's a kind of pretty nice damage multiplier when there's a lot of enemies. But in the end, I switched to the Karastas double head. It's Shadow Dragon helmet, so you'll find it in Dogtown mostly, but also in other areas. And it's light helmet means it get most ability damage possible. It got mana regeneration, stacker on ability use. And my favorite is 30 ability damage if all share the same ability type. And also some ability cost will be refunded on impact. I guess it's not working when we get no ability cost. But anyway, that's why we need this Tempest. So before you upgrade this helmet into third category with ability damage if all share the same ability type, I really like to use uh, Frost Nova in this slot. 
for snow is really useful and cool spell but after we upgrade this helmet we need all abilities all our three abilities to share the same type and we got area duration strike duration and duration blast so we all share duration that's why we need at least one duration ability over here we can use wall of fire in this full slot of course but again wall of fire is completely useless so it's better to have like a really high cost ability here then for our armor it will be research's code you can't change it it's completely broken on this build so it's a medium armor means very high defense and pretty nice ability damage but when you are at low health you will have more damage when we drop at low health we will have insane amount of additional damage but at the same time with second upgrade we will have leech 5% of damage as health 5% of damage as health already leeched and we already leech in around 10% so life steal right now is around like 15% just right now 15% that's crazy and we're doing basically 10k damage per second this means we leeching 1.5k each second 1.5k already but at the same time we will be able to increase our defense by one for each percent of missing health so when we're losing health we're having more damage but we're having more defense so it's harder to hit us this armor is just insane for this build and also leech effectiveness will be tripled versus blizzing enemies and that's like will completely break this stuff but i haven't found this code yet so for augments i'm using 30 defense and 10 percent health on my armor and as I told you, we get 4k health and we're leeching 1.5k, so it's around like 20-30% leech each second, that's crazy. But when you get your dash worn wraps, it will apply siphoned to nearby enemies on potion use, but most importantly it will have increased siphoned duration and 30% leech during siphoned. So, we already leeching around like 50% of our damage. 50% of our damage during siphoned just by wearing this belt. Using spirit bomb will apply siphoned to a lot of enemies and doing 10k damage each second will mean we'll basically recharge full our health each second. And yeah, that's how build works. While we have this bonus damage at low health, we most likely will stay at high health most of the time since we're leeching like insanely fast. Let's talk about our amulet, it will be Magister's Bargain, 20% uh, duration ability damage, more stagger from duration abilities, more mana on kill with duration abilities, and weak point damage 15% augmentation. Weak point damage is very good for our range attack again, and that's it. I like to clear easy enemies with duration abilities, that's why I think uh, this is really strong amulet, but pretty nice stuff is Quickened Amulet, Hellas Grace, and also you can probably experiment with the burden 20% damage while at low health low health triggers 10% earlier and your health cannot go above 70% so it's pretty nice fun for our low health build especially if you're using heavy helmet as i told you for more armor and our rings it will be a range attack damage graven opal so it's uh, no faction ring you will find it in random drops most of the time it got range attack damage weak point damage and you want to hit weak points with range attack of course basically hit headshots range attack damage versus better you will basically melt mages and on weak point you will gain 10 mana so mana will be kind of unlimited for us but still we will use it from time to time and augment will be duration ability damage of course and second ring is marsh of black city it's unique ring your ability damage is always critical hit as i promised you every ability will be critical hit thanks to this ring using ability consumes 20 percent of your maximum health as physical damage so again when we're using abilities we're kind of sacrificing our health thanks for this ring but we don't care about health and uh, we have 25 percent area ability damage augmentation on this ring also another substitution for this ring can be precious decay for more necrotic damage and necrotic ability damage versus health it's pretty nice one if you're playing on uh, like super leech build when you want to as much life steal as possible you want to have higher defense so this paragon's knuckle is also nice flat defense 10% defense and more resistance at low health and same goes for another ring it can be a flat health so more health is also pretty fun stuff to have on this type of build because uh, when you have more health you can more freely trigger this low health damage 
And last but not least, our runes. It will be Hunger, your weapon attacks leech 25% of damage for 10 seconds when you activate it, but mostly we use it for leech effectiveness. Again, our leech effectiveness right now will be around 60%. We're basically leeching 6k like HP every second, and that's crazy. I use Redouble for more ability damage and also Shatter for range attack damage. That's it. That's my runes. And to make everything even more broken, we need to correct companion. So, first companion will be Emric. And we will use Emric with Entangling Spirits to apply Weakened and Necrotic damage, the Bell Toss to apply Quitus to our target, and Time Slow, just in case we need to slow down time to deal more damage and stuff like that. So, how we level up and why Emric? Emric is a hero of Wilgard right now. You will gain this when you complete his storyline, so his companion quests, and yellow health threshold is now increased by 10%. It's very beneficial for us. As also, if you combine it with the amulet I told you, but here is how we level our abilities. This Beltos is really powerful stuff, and uh, first of all, we're reducing cooldown by 20%. While Kratos is active, we're gaining more mana every second, we don't care about it too much. Kratos duration plus 20%, initial damage will be increased, more damage from Kratos, and most importantly, last part. It will reduce target resistance to necrotic damage by 25%. Very useful against targets who are really resistant to necrotic damage. Then we're getting our Entangling Spirits, and by leveling it correctly, you will have more damage versus uh, armor and barrier with this, if we don't care about it too much. What we care about is this last part. During combat uh, it can be auto-triggered from time to time, but most importantly, more weakened duration plus 50%, and on critical hit applied shield. So shield is another like condition on enemy and we will have more damage against it based on our skill tree. For time slow it's pretty standard uh, time slow that will give us basically ability to cast spells for free. So why we need this weakened condition on our Entangling Spirits? Because applying weakened also applies vulnerability to necrotic damage. That's insanely overpowered since we got only necrotic damage at our arsenal and when enemy is re resistant to necrotic damage you just cast this first spell at him and instantly he will become vulnerable to necrotic damage by keeping weakened for more we can basically keep uh, any target vulnerable to necrotic damage, very useful against big bosses. And if you're fighting versus demons or undeaths, it's a lot more powerful. I'm using Preserved Gurn Hide for more weakened effectiveness, more damage versus weakened targets, and weakened will reduce defense by 30, by 30 flat augmentation. So that's it. And for weapon, I'm using Hermetic Pendulum. Attack my target applies vulnerability to necrotic damage, pretty useful, just in case you cast it, for example, Entangling Spirits, it's on cooldown, then you use an attack my target, and if you don't know, you just need to enter into this tactic mode and use top bar, so you just top bar, attack target, and it will become vulnerable to necrotic damage. And I'm using Metal Plated Focus to reduce cooldowns of Amric. So here's our necrotic vulnerability application. And then just to keep ourselves safe, I like to use Davrin with Battle Cry to activate Taunt. Taunt will mean uh, enemies will try to focus down him instead of us and we can completely freely deal damage. So that's what I leveled over here. That's how I leveled him and it's mostly like self-explanatory, pretty easy skill tree. For Trinket I'm using the Revival Charges just in case. For armor, it's most importantly to have this crafter's trappings, so enemies can remain weakened when detonated. That's really important, and I like to use Warden Shell for most Tiger. That's it, basically, so he is pretty easy and self-explanatory dude. And I guess it's time to show you this build in action. So let's jump into Arena. Basically, you just hold the button, you can uh, pump Taunt. Can you Taunt, please? So, everyone is taunted, and basically we're using our <laughs> ability to crit everyone and blast everyone, and we can enter into ultimate, and that's it basically, that's how you deal with enemies most of the time, it doesn't matter if it's bosses, not bosses, or anyone, you will destroy them like that. That's our basic combination, when we fight in range enemies, we just bump this quick damaging button, and that's it, so... 
basically we're standing still and dealing damage. We don't need to do anything, we can uh, await enemy's attacks by casting spells, and then we're just standing still, <laughs> dealing like crazy amount of damage over like every second, and casting spells every few seconds too. As you can see, we basically replenishing all our health back whenever we deal or deal damage. Just look at this like health bars, it's crazy. I think I need to just take some damage to show you how crazy our life still is. I will cast spells just to like just to lose my health a little bit so my health is almost lost and now look, now look. That's how our life still works. Basically we life stealing everything in a second. Again, we're basically not using companions, we're using uh, this AoE ability 1, ability 2, ability 3, and then standing still and shooting our crazy weapon from the range, completely like melting everyone we see. Demon is not a problem, we lost some health, but look, just in a second we gain all our health back with increased damage. And yes, that's with high damage build, but low damage build will deal not like 3k damage uh, against enemies like this. Maybe around like 1.5-2k, so we're losing some DPS, but they basically won't be able to deal any damage to us. And 9-7k crits is just basic. Against bosses and high health enemies, you want to play like this. So, first of all, you want to apply Weakened from our friend Emric. And this Weakened will make him vulnerable to our necrotic damage. And you see this 9k crits upon all enemies over there. That's just crazy. I don't see my target, but there's no target at all. So you don't need to look on your mana. You don't need to do basically anything. And also our companions can be really nicely combined with Entangling Spirits and Dash from above. It's a detonation combination, so you can detonate them, you can instantly make the storm, you can drop Siphon on them, so you can increase your leech potential, and then just destroy your enemies. That's it, basically. That's how we play. And coolest part, we're basically melting mages. We're basically melting mages from the distance, you see, because we got insane damage versus better and... It's completely broken build. Oh my god. It's truly the best and highest damage build in Dragon Age Wilgard right now. That's just insane. Look at these mages. Oh my god, they just melted. And every ability will be crit. Jeez. Let's crit on him. Oh my god. Bro. Jeez. This build is so broken and I hope you enjoyed it in Dragon Age Wilgard. Make sure to watch other cool videos on the screen right now and see you there.